Brazilians on the front row. Helio Castro Neves then, his third career pole, his second of the season. And alongside him, Cristiano de Mata, the best qualifying performance to date for the 26-year-old Brazilian. The second row, Michael Andretti with his five victories. Juan Montoya has only had one win so far this year as reigning champion. That was in Milwaukee. And in row three, it is Dario Franchitti in a Honda Reynard who won here last year. And alongside him, Christian Fittipaldi, the 29-year-old, making his 87th career start. Then the Swede, Kenny Brack, makes his debut here in Toronto. And alongside him will be Gilles de Ferran, who has five career wins, two this year. Fernandez has won here in the past, back in 1996. Guterman's best finish so far this year at second place. Oriol Servia lines up in 11th place, the impressive Spanish rookie. Alongside him, Paul Tracy, the early season championship leader. Row 7 has Jimmy Vassar on the inside. It's been 29 races since he last won. And Max Pappas, who won the season opener in Miami. In row 8, Mark Blundell, who was quickest in the warm-up this morning. And alongside him, our points leader, Roberto Moreno. 17th on the grid, Patrick Carpentier. A bit of a disappointment for the Canadian. Brian Herter also said he failed to get the best out of his tyres in qualifying. 19th, the first time that Alex Tagliani's had the chance to race champ cars in front of his home crowd. Michel Jourdain lines up alongside him on that centre of the grid. In row 11, it's Sinji Nakano, the 29-year-old who has missed three races this year, and Norberto Fontana, whose best finish came at Cleveland. Tasso Marquez starts on the inside of row 12, and alongside him, Kurosawa, the Ford Lola, who's qualified on the same row as, as his teammate. And then in 25th position, it is Luis Garcia, who is making actually his Toronto debut as well. Right, now the cars beginning to get themselves assembled as we look forward to the green flag coming out. Helio Castroneves is the man who leads them around. Cristiano De Mata, who's been startling really this year, really an impressive form. Now, are they going to get the cars together enough for green flag as they come out of the final turn? Turn 11, we wait to see if it goes green. It looks to me, green yes, flag, it does go green. green. Helio Castroneves heads down the inside into turn one. De Mata tries to go around the outside as Michael Andretti squeezes in there in third place and those initial cars get through safely this is on board one Montoya he's forced he's trying to get past Michael Andretti down the long straight Andretti covers the inside as they head down towards turn number three and the leaders are side by side the Castro oh, oh, Castro oh, Nevis oh, oh, locks it up oh, Frank oh, has hit Montoya Frank Kinney has hit Montoya and they're out, both out by the looks of it. And what a disastrous start for the two championship contenders of last year. These two guys were leading the championship last year. They've been battling at the back of the championship this year. Now they take each other out going into turn three. Elio lost the lead. It was all a chain reaction to the, to the Elio running too wide into turn three. Cristiano De Manor picked up the lead. Elio stays on. And then Michael Hallows had a bit of a lockup. And then Juan just reacted to that. Dario ran into the back of him. We are going to get a yellow flag. I'm amazed, Ben. We've got a green flag. The field was so spread out, apart from the first five cars, some of the guys hadn't even come through turn 10. I know. I was astonished about that as well. Well, at least this will bunch them up. But look at these two cars. They're interlocked. That front wing, they look need, at it. It's, trying to to, move. it's stuck in behind one. the rear wheel. Yes, I mean, they've got to move one back. They need to roll one, one back. Here's a replay once again. Now, look. Elio locks it up. And Cristiano digs down, in, d d digs down the inside. Then Michael locks it up. And then... Uh, yeah. Dario reacts along with one and they just get tangled up together and oh, the two of them are so fighting so hard in this championship a good view from on board with Juan Manuel right now they see yeah Michael I think I, I think as you're right I think Franchitti overreacted on the brakes when he saw Michael lock up in front of him I think he hit the brakes a little too hard and that caused him to go out of control and then piled into the side of the time they still can't get these two <laughs> cars separated can they look at them They're, uh, they've now gone a lap down Yes, that's right. Now, take another look at this. Helio did was so well to get that oh, back. Oh, you see, Dario got on the brakes, and it, put, it pulled his car hard right, and then he reacted and brought it back left, but it, and that's when he made the contact. Yeah, let's take another look from on board Montoya. You'll see Michael Andretti lock up first. Of course, you can't see Frank Kitty from the side here. There he comes into the side of Montoya's car. And Montoya look, puts his hand up and says, what on earth's going on here? And still, they can't get these two cars separated. And did you see who snuck through down the inside of that whole event? Who was that? Roberto Moreno, who started ah. 16th. Still, they're trying to get those two cars separated. As you say, this has put them down a lap already, and this is completely disastrous for these two. At last, they've managed to get Montoya's car free of uh, Dario Franchitti's car. I know these two are friends off track, but that's just getting silly with <laughs> those two cars being melded together. Cristiano De Mata is our race leader after a dramatic start here in Toronto. Elio Castroneves back to second. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back to Toronto, where Montoya and Franchitti make their way back to pit lane. Franchitti's already in the Team Green pits, and there is Montoya. They finally got the cars separated, and Montoya's managed to get his car safely back with that punctured right rear. Now, not sure how much other damage. I think certainly the floor pan on the right rear is damaged, and Dario's out of his car, so that car too badly damaged. And what does this man need to do to buy some luck here this year? It just is not coming together. Same story for Juan Montoya. They battled for last year's championship but Team Green in particular has had a lot of bad luck this year. We're, we're fast, uh, both cars are fast, we can't seem to quite get both of them up there for qualifying. Well, that's a, that's a little look at some of the bad luck and some of the difficulties that Team Green have had, and it's happened again as we get ready to go green. Cristiano de Mata, who leads for the first time ever in a champ car race, comes through to take green flag. Helio Castroneves runs in second place. Michael Andretti under pressure from teammate Christian Fittipaldi. Then Kenny Breck, look at this three-way battle. It's Oriol Servia sliding down the inside. Oh, the Ferran is there as well, and Tracy trying to get involved. Servia got very sideways. And Tracy there, hitting for de Ferran. That's getting the move done, but Servia being very aggressive right behind him too. What's going to happen as they come into turn three? Tracy goes over to the right to defend his line on Oriol. And now Deferran trying to get the, keep his place, but no, he's had to back off a little bit there. That was feisty stuff indeed from Servia and Tracy, and I'm sure they banked wheels coming out of turn two. Deferran was pushed out wide, managed to survive, but uh, very important for Deferran to try and make up places. He lies third in the championship, remember, and uh, just one point behind Michael Andretti. Montoya has uh, got out of his car, as we saw just a few moments ago. Franchitti also out of his car. Let's go down and hear from Montoya in pit lane. Face. Totally a victim. What were you trying to accomplish there? Not nothing. You know, I could have been second in the stars. I said, don't do anything silly. I break pretty early. As soon as I break, the man I could have crossed in front of me. <laughs> then I was breaking in the herb and then suddenly, you know, that run in the back of myself. And it's a shame because the car, I thought, I thought we had a really strong car. And it was really good on the break. And so I was re re really hoping to get a good result here. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, you can really see, again, Tomata got sideways under brakes just then. It is so bumpy in the braking areas here, Guy, and that's really, I think, what caught some of the drivers out. And, of course, on that first lap when they're trying to make up places, they're running on different lines to the line they would be running in qualifying, where perhaps they've got used to what the bumps do. On that first lap, they're on different parts of the track, and the bumps just catching them out. And they may upset the car just a little bit as more as they expect. Here again is the start for you. You can see the top six cars are all nicely side by side as they come through. But the rest of the field is still back in turn nine and ten somewhere. But they do get the green flag anyway. And at this point, both Juan and uh, Cristiano de Matos, as they go down towards turn one, are off the line. That's right. But uh, Montoya got away well. Uh, Castro Neves made a good job. He defended the inside. A couple of years ago, we saw Ray Hall and Frank Kitty come together, turning into this first quarter. Damata was brave. He went around the outside of uh, Montoya. Montoya didn't do anything silly at that point. And you could see that uh, Montoya was just happy to basically take his line. Look how far back the other cars were. They'd uh, been given green anyway. And then, of course, it was down towards turn three where the problem occurred. Now, Paul Tracy there. He is the man who's probably gained more than anybody. He's gained some five positions through this uh, first lap fracas and Tracy who won at Long Beach when he started down in 17th place well he's running in a, a good position he's in seventh so far here it just seems odd to me that uh, his teammate Barrio and both one both got out of their cars because it to us it really didn't look like there was that much damage maybe a new nose for Dario and a new uh, right rear and a, maybe a bit of wing for one and Obviously, though, the team knows better than we do. There must have been some more damage, but it really didn't look that bad. No, that's right. Uh, I think perhaps the, the floor pan on Montoya's car got damaged because he drove around with a puncture, but uh, Frankini, perhaps there was some front suspension damage, which we couldn't quite see. Look at this. Uh, the top four definitely have opened up a bit of a gap to Kenny Breck in the shell car in fifth position with Adrian Fernandez behind him. Great performances from Cristiano De Mata up front. We've got two Brazilians up front and another Brazilian in fourth position with Michael Andre threatening in third place at this point but Cristiano de Mata has no experience of leading this quality of field in champ car racing he's got better and better as this season has progressed his second season of champ car racing and what a fine job he's doing right now and they've certainly come a long way with this team in the last few events they've really been performing very well getting the best out of that Toyota 
and now the best out of Cristiano De Matter. There's a lot of talk about him and what he'll be doing next year. There suddenly seems to be a lot of interest amongst team owners over Cristiano De Matter. They've decided that he is an excellent racing driver. Uh, of course, built more like a jockey. Very small little guy, but very quick, as you can see. Yes, he is, and uh, has won the Indy Lights Championship in the past couple of years ago. Had uh, some good background of racing in Europe as well. Raced in the British Formula 3 Championship some years ago. And uh, did some Formula 3000 as well with the Pacific team back in 1996. Ran with West Surrey Racing in the British Formula 3 Series. Cristiano with plenty of experience, lots of great background. And now he's putting that all into practice by leading here in Toronto. Looking further back, Kenny Breck. There is Kenny, the Swede, running in fifth position. Adrian Fernandez not far behind. Kenny's first time here, of course, in Toronto. He's getting used to the street races. Uh, it's been a while since he's been running on the streets. Of course, he raced in the Barber Dodge Series, and he, too, raced a lot in Europe on the road courses, the Formula 3000. And he seems to be enjoying it here at Toronto quite a lot. That's right. Uh, Team Ray Hall could do with uh, some good results for both drivers. Kenny himself, of course, had a great run last time out to finish in second place in Cleveland, so that's his best finish to date. And he runs quite well in the championship because he lies in fourth place on 63 points, and that's only five points off second place, Michael Andretti. So for Kenny Breck, who is no doubt the top rookie this year, although I suppose it's a little hard considering him as a rookie with all the uh, American racing experience he's had, and winner of the Indy 500. Nonetheless, he's adapting to these new tracks very quickly and performing well. Now, Paul Tracy and Oriol Servia still battling over seventh position in the background. Again, Kenny Brack. And then that gap back to Paul. Although not much. Uh, interesting too is we focus here on Kenny and Adrian Fernandez, because Adrian is one of the five race winners, previous race winners in the field here today. Adrian won it in 1996 and it was his first kart race champion win. That's right, yes. Uh, Fernandez taking his first victory in the series here in Toronto. A, a race that was so sadly overshadowed, however, by the death of Jeff Krosnoff, who was involved in a fatal accident in that race. And uh, a marshal also was killed that day. A very sad day uh, some four years ago here in Toronto. But Fernandez has uh, fought back from that uh, and won several races since then. Uh, this first race win, perhaps not one that he particularly wants to remember with great affection as it was such a sad day. But he's had several wins since then, and uh, including this year, he's had a good win. He has had a good win. Actually, unfortunately for Adrian, a couple of his wins have been under unfortunate circumstances too, uh, which has not been good. This race up front, this lead four here, all staying pretty close together. Kenny is not really losing touch with them. But he's just dropped back a little bit. And uh, Christian's just opened up a tad of a gap over Elio Castro Neves. But I think they're all just keeping everybody in sight. It's a long race, long way to go. We've had one yellow flag, which they know they needed for get the fuel distance. So that, that'll be coming to effect, although it was only a short one. Uh, but that first round of pit stops, we expect around about lap 33 or so. At the moment, we have completed uh, 11 laps, I believe. Yes, 11 laps completed by our race leader, Cristiano De Mata, who has just under a second's advantage over Michael Andretti, who battles, uh, or over Helio Castanevas, rather, and then Michael Andretti in third, with Christian Fittipaldi right behind. And interesting to see these two Newman Haas cars going so well. They've been up there in all of the sessions this weekend. Both drivers, both Andretti and Fittipaldi, have featured at the top of the list. Meanwhile, in the pits, Takuya Kurosawa, the Japanese driver, looks as though he's got an early mechanical problem here. De Mata is our race leader. Castroneva second ahead of Andretti, Fittipaldi, Breck and Fernandez. 17 laps, 18 laps in fact completed now as he crosses the line. And uh, still a one second advantage for Cristiano oh. De Mata. Blundell is passed by Patrick Carpentier and by Tagliani. Although Blundell tried to get it back again, I think. Didn't quite see how that turned out. No, he didn't get it back. So Carpentier and Tagliani both get past Mark Blundell. So Mark has actually lost uh, three positions in the last couple of laps. So. Uh, obviously a little bit of a problem, we'll ride on board, see if we can spot anything, see him down shifting there in the Princess Gate, off to the left. Accelerates cleanly onto the back stretch, let's listen up here and see if we can notice anything wrong with the car. Sounds okay, there's Papis versus Moreno meanwhile, which is just a slight ahead of, of that group of uh, Carpentier, Tagliani and Blundell. There's the Vistion car, 
of the man who celebrated in Cleveland two weeks ago. What a tremendous performance it was. And it wasn't as if it was a race he inherited there, a tall guy. He took pole and he led every lap of that race and just dominated proceedings. He did, and then at one point he was getting quite a bit of pressure from Gilles de Ferran, uh, but he still managed to hang on there. And then, of course, Gilles had his brake problems and dropped further back through the field. Uh, but he did an excellent job and was very good. And the team overall did a very good job too in the pit stops and everything else. And uh, uh, a great result for Roberto Moreno. There is uh, Moreno at the back of this group. Papis yeah. on board with him now in the number seven Miller Light car. And ahead of these two, if you'll keep an eye out, we saw Jimmy Vassar just ahead of Papis and then Maurizio Guterman ahead of him. Roberto Moreno was pointed out it's been 12 years since you won a race. That's a long wait, long time to wait for your next win. It is, but uh, the celebrations were so tremendous, and he has such enthusiasm for the sport. It's great to see. Blundell has pulled over, so whether he did have some mechanical problem or not, I don't know if we're going to be able to listen up at all. We're not uh, hearing anything. Well, now he's asking for a push, so he hasn't obviously just pulled off here. But he did lose those positions, which made us question as to his problem. And... We listened and rode on board and didn't really see anything, but we'll try and find out exactly what Mark's problem is. We go back to the lead, Cristiano De Matti right there. They come through where Mark is, and they're getting closer to Garcia. Yeah. Mark doesn't like sitting in this position one bit, I wouldn't think. No, that's not a fun place to have stopped and uh, just waiting for a push, but he knows, we should know, that really the only people who are allowed to touch the cars are the uh, kart safety teams who come along in there white and yellow pickups and they're the only people who are actually allowed to touch the cars and not allowed to be touched by the corner workers as they're called the marshals the flag marshals who uh, stand behind the fence and wave the blue yellow or red flags they are not allowed to actually get out and push the cars it's only the cart safety teams who are allowed to do that i'm wondering then ben if to get one of the cart safety there you see the cart safety teams. i wonder if they've had to bring out a truck which it looks like they're going to stay local yellow and um, pull Mark back behind some tyres maybe but they may have had to bring a truck out to get out to Mark which could brought, uh, bring out a full course yellow Cristiano de Madalese 20 laps have been completed long way to go stay with us Carpentier now in 14th Tagliani in 15th place and uh, both of them tied up behind Papis here and Roberto Moreno but Papis is the one leading this little group of cars 25 laps have been completed so we're expecting another 10 to 12 laps before they start making their first pit stops there is Cristiano De Mata, and I gather that uh, his team are getting on to Garcia's team to say come on how about getting him out of the way here Carl Wells has been asking them to uh, move over and here is the situation saying can you move over and Frank Arciero now don't forget these guys <laughs> were, were partners not so long ago. That's interesting, isn't it? Because Frank Cartiero with Project Racing as it is now. And uh, now him and Cal Wells actually arguing about the situation. And there's Andreas Liebeli in the background. So they're saying, hey, no, Luis is doing 61 seconds. He's only two tenths slower than your guy. So why should we move over? We don't want to go another lap down. And absolutely, look, I mean, Garcia has not got in Damata's way effectively here because, as you said, it hasn't allowed Castro Neves to close up to the back of Damata, and that would be the indicator. If, if those guys suddenly closed up to the back of Damata, then yes, you could say he was being held up, but that's not happened. I think there's more to the argument, probably. More something to do with some of the lawsuits that are still going on between those guys. <laughs> Certainly didn't look as though there was any love lost in there between them as they uh, argued in pit lane. There's our championship leader, Roberto Moreno, running in 13th as we glance back towards our race leader once again. Cristiano De Mata ahead of Helio Castro Neves. Michael Andretti in third place. Christian Fittipaldi in fourth. Then Kenny Breck, Adrian Fernandez still in sixth. And Oriol Servia in seventh place, having fought his way past Paul Tracy a few laps ago. I think we're starting to see quite a few more marbles out on the track too, Ben, which is, of course, then going to take away a racing line because uh, once you pull out a line onto those marbles, of course, you lose all the grip. So it's going to make it even harder to pull out of line and make an overtaking manoeuvre. So uh, that's right. There's always an issue on these street tracks, although the harder compound tyres this year uh, are helping a little bit in that regard. Firestone, the only tyres used by all the teams now. No competition between them and Goodyear, and that's meant to, they've come up with a slightly harder compounds, which does reduce that problem a little bit. But uh, once again, you're looking at those Top three cars getting pretty close. Look at Fittipaldi tucked in under the rear wing of his teammate, Michael Andretti. There's Kenny Breck in the shell machine, just 
basically pacing it at the moment. I think all of them thinking about fuel consumption, hoping to make this a two-stop race, which is the way things are going at the moment, oh. should be possible. Here now, up the front, here it is. Yeah, Garcia and Damata really right together, and we gather that Garcia is going to get out of the way. But now, if he gets out of the way for Cristiano Damata, then do all the other teams have to come up and ask him to get out of the way for them, for the others as well? I mean, it, it, he's been close to him, but he's really not been hounding him. And where is exactly Garcia supposed to pull over? Look at Tamara waving his fist at Garcia. Garcia trying to stay on the lead lap though, remember, and that's uh, what he's trying to achieve here. And that's usually seen to be fair enough by competitors in the series, and uh, certainly didn't let him through there, did he? And Tamara's going to get very cross in a moment. Meanwhile, Castroneves is really having to defend from Michael Andretti. Andretti really looking for an opportunity to slide past that uh, Team Penske entry. See, now this is where we need a decision from the race stewards. They should be, if they think he should be moved over then they should be showing him a blue flag and saying get out of the way and if they haven't then they can't oh he's passed he's passed so maybe maybe Garcia deciding that uh, he couldn't withstand it anymore but I have to say I don't blame Garcia for that he was running quickly this last lap was a 60.9 and uh, most of the leaders doing that same sort of pace now perhaps the matter will get away Garcia and in fact there you are the warning flag from Jim Swintol, the rolled black flag meant Garcia, watch out because you will be given a black flag unless you get out of the leader's way. So there you are, the authorities did decide to do something about it. Okay, no, let's clear that up now. So he's going to have to move over when these three guys come through and I think that could make a big change in the field there. Off to the left, you can see a lot of the rubber as Look Michael Andretti. tries to make a move on Elio. Round the outside, no, Elio defends the inside. Oh, now he comes back in, cuts across Christian's nose and now he's alongside him. Wow, this is great stuff, but there's hardly room to get two cars side by side up that little slope towards turn five. And Helio somehow managed to hold on to his second place. You know what happened here? I think Michael saw the fact that Damada had got by Garcia and then Michael decided, well, we better make our move now, otherwise Damada's just going to drive off into the distance. Quite possible, and uh, Castro Neves doesn't seem to be able to push that hard at the moment. He may have the wick turned down, he may have to be running a very lean fuel mixture at this early point in the race. The team perhaps telling him, you've got to watch the fuel mileage, you cannot afford to run it too rich, and that could be part of the question mark here. Now, interestingly, of course, we've got a Toyota engine leading, a Honda in second, and then a couple of Ford engined cars running third and fourth, and then another Ford machine, uh, several of them, in fact, with Breck and Fernandez following on, and then Sevilla with the Toyota power. This year, the Toyotas really have been good on fuel consumption. Look at this, once again, Castro Neves just covers that inside middle line, really, into turn three. Once again, Michael has a little think about getting past, but it doesn't quite happen for him. So after 30 laps, we're looking at pit stops coming up within about seven laps or so, and Damata still our race leader. In comes Kenny Breck, who was running in fifth position. Listening up on the radio, as Team Ray will go to work. Let's hope it's a clean stop. Fuel comes out. A little bit slow getting away. Go, 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 go. Clear, clear, clear. But Kenny Breck rejoins the fray. Oh, we've got Moreno spun. Moreno has been hit and spun down at turn number one. Trying to get it running again. He's got it running. Don't stall it. And it is a full course yellow now. Moreno, the championship leader. And they actually only lost four positions. Tagliani, Carpentier, Herta and Brack got by him. Uh, sorry, not Brack, because Brack was in the pits. That's right, so uh, Herta Jordan is right behind him, but that's bad news indeed for the championship leader, as meanwhile we're seeing the race leader now come into the pit. Let's take a look at what happened. That was Tagliani trying to get down the inside. We said he'd been looking uh, fairly aggressive a few moments ago. He'd already got past teammate Carpontier. Tagliani really shouldn't have been in there. This is what happened to Marquez and Fontana. Well, Same Marquez yeah, was at least a little bit more alongside Fontana, but uh, still really wasn't the space for it. And people getting a bit desperate before this first round of pit stops now. Now, the matter came in, but Castro Neves and the uh, two Newman Haas cars did not. So, he's had to stop earlier on lap number 36. And if he can only do 36 laps between stopping, he's going to be in a bit of trouble. Now comes De Ferran into the pits. Oriol Servia coming out cleanly. Gilles de Ferran has been running uh, fairly consistently, but not up with the leaders. Oh, and what's happened to Christian? He's lost his nose cone. Christian Filippoli's lost his nose cone. Take a look at the front of that car. There was no nose cone, no front wing on that car. And everything going on here. Apparently, Christian hit the back of Castro Neves' car. And there's a new nose cone waiting for Christian in the pits. But it's all going on here. As, uh, oh, no, that's the one that's been ripped off. So it must have been in the pit lane. 
Perhaps, or I'm not sure what happened. Maybe, out, maybe coming out of the pits, he clipped the car that was parked in front of him in the, as far as, as the pit boxes. And that would be Castro Neves. But I don't oh, think he's he stopped yet. Brian Herter now. Brian Herter's got a fire in the back of his car. Well, nothing happens for uh, <laughs> 20, uh, 35 laps, and it all happens on the 36th. Brian Herter, Tasso Marquez, uh, along with Roberto Moreno, Christian Fittipaldi. All sorts of, look at this, look at this. This Fittipaldi hit the back of Deferran's car. It was Deferran's car as he came in, as Deferran came in. I missed that completely as I watched Deferran come into the pits and that nose cone sitting there. I hadn't uh, spotted that that came off Fittipaldi's car. So that is remarkable. And Fittipaldi now comes back in to have a new nose cone. What a disaster for him. He's been looking like a potential winner here this afternoon. And We're I don't, done. I think it's ripped out the mounting points from the monocoque and oh, they can't no. even mount a new nose cone. And you hear them on the radio say, Saying we're done and Christian was having such a great race right behind his teammate Michael Andretti. Oh, that is just unbelievable. Let's see if we can spot it again as to what happened there. He, he can't believe that, can he? Christian should have called it. Deferrin coming in, Christian behind him. Deferrin's getting a bit stuck because he's got Michael on his inside and then he cuts in behind Michael to get into his pit box. And it really was just a bit of a shambles. I don't think, you can't blame Deferrin. He had to find his way into his pit box. And it sh Christian really should have been Christian perhaps just a bit a more wary of what was going on there. He was just a bit too close to him. That left rear got caught up there. And see Brian Herter out of the car in what may be his last drive for Mo Nunn. Tony Canan hoping to be back for Michigan just one week from today. Uh, if he can get over his arm injuries in time and be fit enough to race. So, it's all happening here in Toronto. Cristiano De Matta still leads after that first pit stop. Andretti second, Castro Neves back to third, and Fernandez is now fourth. And it's Cristiano De Matta who leads, Michael Andretti second, Castro Neves in third, and once again doesn't seem to be able to keep up the same sort of pace once they're up to race speed, green flag. And he's got to watch out, because behind him now is Adrian Fernandez, former winner here back in 1996. The Mexican, and with right behind him in that uh, yellowy coloured car, the Spaniard Oriol Servia. The rest of the group comes through here, and uh, Gilles de Ferran part of that group down in eighth position. Gilles de Ferran, if you can keep it up, is on for his best ever finish at Toronto, as long as he finishes higher than 15th. He's not had much luck here in Toronto, and uh, we saw one of the reasons why in the pit lane there, when he got tagged by Christian Filippardi. Obviously, it doesn't seem to have done any damage to his car, or well, none that's been noticed at this point. As his teammate Castro Nevers uh, hangs on into third there, but is getting very busy behind him with Adrian and Oriol Servia, who saw put a fantastic pass on Paul Tracy earlier. Yes, it was indeed. Now, uh, we also saw in the recent round of dramas, Brian Herter suffer some sort of fire in the back of his car. Oh, Michelle Jourdain's out of his car. I'm just getting a consolatory hug from Tom Brown, uh, the boss of that team nowadays, the team manager of, that, of the Bettenhausen team. And that's a shame to see Jordan out, so he joins the list of retirements. 70 laps to go, and, uh, well, we've seen plenty of dramas already. And uh, let's go down now and hear from Brian Herter. Drama, and fire. you ended up being a victim of a different type. What happened, Brian? Yeah, it's one of those freak things. Looks like uh, the exhaust broke on the car, caught the clutch on fire and all the bodywork, and uh, burned up some pieces we need to go racing, so it ended our day as a substitute for Tony Kanaan. Now, what's your status for this next week? Because I know Tony is targeting Michigan as a possible comeback. I'm going golfing and going on vacation with my family next week, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, as I've said all along, my goal is to get back in a full-time deal for next year. Uh, you know, I'm still talking to Jerry Forsyth, and, uh, I mean, uh, hopefully that's going to work out. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, the, well, all I want to do is be out there racing full-time next year, and uh, we'll see. I hope that'll, that'll happen. We've enjoyed having you. Hope you get more chances. Thanks. It, it's been fun. So Brian Herter there, enjoying his standing in time for Tony Kanaan. Tony due to be back out next time in Michigan, despite the wrist that he broke in Detroit. Now, we saw Tagliani making a successful move on Max Pappas just a moment ago. That's put Tag up into 10th place, and he's driving very aggressively this afternoon. There's Juan Montoya. I think uh, he's probably going to be heading home soon. He was out so early in this race. But Tagliani, guy, let's come back to him for a second. He really is driving aggressively. Look at Sevilla. Well, yeah. Sevilla turning down the inside of Fernandez. Oh, another good move from the Spaniard. But can he keep it there? They're side by side up towards turn five. Still side by side. And oh, he's overcooked. Oh, he's, oh, he's into the tower oh, wall. Oriol 
Serbia had such a great race going, put on a couple of superb manoeuvres and overcooked it. Now he's in the tire wall and that's broken to the suspension parts. Such Boy, a great you can get in reverse. See if you can get out of that mess. They're telling him to get it into reverse, see if he can back it out of it. But is the engine even still running? I don't know. I think yeah, it is. The engine's running. Oh, and he's got first gear. Now what's going now on? Now back it up. Now back it up. Now back it up. I think you can back it up now. He's trying to find that reverse gear. Come on. Come on, Oriol. It's very hard. They've got reverse, but they're very hard to find. Here it is again. You can see just a little bit too much power turns into it. And then that's a case also of the... The surface is changing, but look how he squeezed down the inside of Adrian. Adrian sees him, doesn't turn in on him. Adrian thinks he's got the inside line here, so he'll stay there. And Oriol, again, right up against the wall, but here we change surfaces too, and that assists the slide that already started. Oh, and he had it then. It looked as though Fernandez had backed out of it at that point. It looked as though he was about to give him the place. But Servia just carried too much speed into the corner and the back end slid around and Servia therefore put it into the tyre barrier. What a shame after a tremendous drive from the young Spaniard. Rookie driver this year, remember, teammate to this man who leads the race, Cristiano De Mata, after 44 laps, still out in front, but it's Michael Andretti chasing him. This is going to be a true showdown. Stay with us for all the action. Castro Neves ran in second for much of the race. After the first pit stop, he dropped to third. But let me tell you that Castro Neves has just come into the pit. There's some sort of mechanical problem. And in fact, he's just got out of his car. So Castro Neves is not going to be playing any further part in this race. And that's a great disappointment for the man who won in Detroit earlier this year and who took pole position here yesterday. That means, uh, as we watch Servia come back out, he's just come into the pits. Remember, if you were with us, he crashed into the tyres a few moments ago after trying to make a, a move on Fernandez. It nearly worked, but just <laughs> didn't quite come off. And they've changed the nose cone on that car. Changed the nose cone. And how about this? His teammate, the leader, is coming up to complete this lap. And they're going to catch up with Oriol very quickly. Now, does Oriol Servia let Cristiano by? very quickly and easily and then block for a <laughs> lap or two on Michael Andretti. Surely not, that wouldn't be very fair, would it? Now look at uh, Castro Neves' car, that's being pushed away, they've already put the wets on there and Guterman was also just pulled off the side of the track a few moments ago and that apparently was some sort of electrical problem for Maurizio Guterman and we're hearing it's some sort of engine problem for Castro Neves. So we did uh, talk before the race began, Guy, that, that this right might be a race of attrition. It's always tough on machinery, and so far that seems to be uh, standing out. Seems to be the case at the moment. We have 13 cars running, one a lap behind. The rest out for damage and uh, incidents and accidents, and of course some... system. Yes, I don't know why. It's start burning, smell, and uh, getting very hot as well. So um, it's a shame. Uh, I was having a little problem on the braking point, especially with the rear. So I have to control a lot and uh, it was fun because this battle was pretty good holding the second place and also the start I just went too fast on the braking point the car slide and thank God I was able to save so uh, well, it wasn't a, a very uh, good race I was having a lot of fun but hey we, we've done a good job I think the team did a fantastic job just just race happened see you on the super speedway next weekend exactly so Castro Neves uh, always manages to come up with a smile, always comes up with some sort of positive comment. You never see him down or depressed, despite being such an emotional man, and it's uh, a fun and a joy to have him in the paddock. He's out of this race, but uh, I'm sure he'll feature strongly in a number of the races to come this year. Meanwhile, looking back at this battle with Papis in ninth place, behind him is Patrick Carpentier in tenth, and then in eleventh place is our championship leader, Roberto Moreno. And someone who's been very hot right now is Tagliani, He's been uh, picking up a few positions, Alex Tagliani. In Paul Trace, you can see uh, at the front of his uh, car, first of all, you'll see the mark from contact he's had with another guy's tyre. But you also see that helmet that he's wearing this weekend, the special Greg Moore Memorial helmet. It's got some of Greg's colours in there. It was auctioned off for 45,000 US dollars. Indeed, and that, uh, the owner of that will pick it up at the end of this race. Uh, it's good to see uh, raising funds uh, for the Greg Moore Foundation. It was set up at the end of last year in memory of the late great Canadian racer uh, who was so tragically killed at Fontana at the end of last season. Now, we've seen a number of retirements. Another is Mark Blundell. Let's hear from him. Actually, I don't know. All I know is um, I went into turn one and the engine just completely died. 
and uh, it wouldn't restart. The guys tried to bump me and get me going again, but uh, just wouldn't fire up, so it's the end of my day. Meanwhile, up front, here is our race leader, Cristiano De Mata, still just uh, under a second advantage from Andretti. But look at Fernandez, because after that first round of pit stops, he managed to move up into third place, thanks to a couple of people having problems. But he's really running on very much the same pace as these two, and is definitely featuring in the battle here for a potential win his teammate Roberto Moreno championship leader down in 11th but Fernandez today is the one having the more successful run for Patrick Racing now Fernandez has been uh, the fastest pretty much in the last couple of laps 61.2 he did on that last lap 61.4 for race leader Cristiano De Mata. So Adrian Fernandez definitely running very quickly at this point. Quite a big gap behind him then. There's about a three second gap behind Fernandez to Paul Tracy. And then it's Kenny Brecht to Ferran running in sixth. Tagliani running in seventh. And uh, as again, we'll keep an eye on Tagliani. He's been pushing hard all afternoon and enjoying the street courses. He goes well on the street tracks, I have to say, does Alex Tagliani. He's had some good results uh, this year so far. He ran fourth, he finished fourth in Long Beach and finished sixth in Detroit. So he really does seem to go well on these sort of tracks. His aggressive style suiting the tight and unforgiving street circuits. And Tagliani now in seventh. Vassa is running in eighth place behind him. And then Pap is still in ninth ahead of Carpentier, Moreno and Shinji Nakano who has moved up into 12th place now. That's the final point scoring position, remember. Luis Garcia running a lap down in 13th. Sevilla three laps down in 14th. And those are the 14 cars still running in the race. Uh, a lot of cars out of this one, as you mentioned. We had talked about attrition. There you get a look at Tagliani. Now working on Gilles de Ferran, who has never finished uh, higher than 15th here at Toronto. When, when you have a stat like that, I suppose, you know, obviously in Michael Andretti's case, he's won five out of 13 here. You've got to come in, you know, Michael's got to come in all pumped up looking forward to Toronto. And so I would think Jordan Franz has got to come in thinking, oh, not Toronto again. You know? <laughs> Maybe he thinks this will be the one. This, this is the this one. This is the one to turn it around. I'm sure uh, Jill normally has a very positive attitude to everything he does. And uh, not one particularly for superstitions I wouldn't think uh, they call him the professor sometimes because he has a, a very thinking approach to his motor racing does De Ferran and remember he and this man Andretti are separated by just one point in the championship in the battle for second both of them lie behind Moreno but both of them very much in touch with the championship lead and separated by just that single point and don't forget Jill De Ferran and Elio Castro Neves July 26th I'm gonna go to Indianapolis Motor Speedway where they're going to do a couple of days of testing with Roger Penske. As Cristiano De Mata still under pressure from Michael Andretti, I tell you what, he's driving superbly as the young Brazilian up front, 26 years old and in his second season of champ car racing. And he's got one of the masters behind him who is starting his 260th event here today versus, I think it's the 30th event for Cristiano De Mata. Slight difference in race experience. A bit, a bit of difference there. And of course, 38 wins for Michael Andretti. Cristiano, of course, looking for his first one. And he'd love to get it right here in Toronto, a track that Michael has dominated. Won five out of 13 times, never qualified outside the top 10. And I don't think he's ever finished outside the top 10, actually. Well, he's uh, certainly had some great runs here. Although last year, he, uh, I think he failed to finish last year, didn't he? He uh, had a bit of a bad start. I remember hitting, him, hitting the back of Greg Moore's car, and that puts uh, him out of action, I think, for the rest of the day. So, no, it's not a successful day for Michael Andretti 12 months ago, but he's running in a very threatening second place. There's Paul Tracy with Kenny Breck right behind him. Uh, back to our leaders, De Mata, Andretti, Fernandez. Then you can see that... Uh, this for fourth place has rather closed up to the leaders. Tracy and Breck are definitely closer to our leading trio than they were. And in fact, you can see all the way down to Moreno, who's in 11th place, is not that big a gap. In fact, it's only 10 seconds between our race leader, De Mata, and our 11th placed man, Roberto Moreno. And basically, the top 10 in this race are also the top 10 in points, not in the same order, but all fighting in that top 10 for the points. And that would explain why, because they're still here towards the end of the race, of course. Yes, and that's going to, in the, light, the last couple of races have been the results where one guy has leaped a long way and some have gone nowhere. But now, if they all score points, it's going to keep it all very competitive again in the championship. It is, but... Uh, With the exception of Montoya and Frankie, of course. Yeah, we would have hoped to be featuring in this race, but uh, went out 
on that first lap, as we mentioned. Now, Max Pappas continues round. That's uh, 62 laps completed now out of the 112. And we're about 10 laps away from the next round of pit stop. Let's just enjoy the onboard view and sound for a second or two. Oh, no, we won't. We'll quickly, uh, we'll just <laughs> add a little look for Switch Max Pappas. But apparently the reason we didn't do stay there was that we saw uh, Cristiano De Mata just getting a little bit out of shape a moment ago. And uh, perhaps that pressure from Andretti beginning to tell. Looks as though he's safe at the moment. He's had a few twitches today. It looked, uh, made it all look very exciting. Uh, but maybe he's beginning to really feel the pressure from Michael Andretti. Or maybe, because the other thing is car may be going away from him just a little bit. Let's take a little look. I think we've got a replay here of what uh, we're talking about. This was just a second ago when we were on board with Max. This is what Cristiano did, and he got it really quite out of shape there into turn number three. And again, it's that same corner where we've seen people getting out of shape. That's where Elio had his problems on the start, said he went in just too hard. And then, of course, uh, that resulted in the wreck. We've seen a couple of others, Oriol Servia and Paul Tracy, have some violent. moments going in there today. There you hear, uh, I believe that was Cal Wells telling him what sort of mileage they need to be able to get to the pit window, yeah. fuel window. Just a little way to go on that. Apparently Andretti's been having some radio communication problems in his car, but it uh, doesn't seem to be affecting his performance any. Still running very quickly. They're lapping at 61.6 seconds. That was a quick lap from Moreno on that last lap. I don't know how he managed that, because I thought he was bottled up behind Carpentier, but he did manage to a 60.6, apparently, according to the timing and scoring. But it's definitely a case that all of the leaders are closing back up, and in fact, now the top 11 are covered by under 10 seconds. So that shows you how close it is with 49 laps to go. And I think pretty much the reason for that is they're all running on a very lean fuel mixture. They've got the uh, mixture setting that's, that the driver can adjust leaned off means they're running the cars as quickly as possible but on the minimum amount of fuel usage you're so doing uh, better than you need to on fuel now better than you need so use it if you need to so there you hear it that's fernandez's radio in fact saying that they're doing better on fuel and they should be able to keep it to a two-stop race some of these teams drivers trying to get just over two uh, miles per gallon some are running down at about 1.8. Yeah, they need to achieve about 2.1 miles to gallon today to get through on two stops, that's right. It uh, might not sound like very much, but remember, these uh, engines producing, uh, getting on for uh, 850 brake horsepower, perhaps a little more even, and uh, that's plenty of horsepower, and you need a lot of methanol. In fact, you need about double the amount of methanol to correspond with the amount of uh, petrol that you need in an engine. Engines burn about double the amount of methanol to produce similar amount of power. So that means a huge amount of fuel going through these V8 turbocharged engines and providing performance of uh, about 190 miles an hour on this longest straight here in Toronto. And then hard on the brakes, down from 190 miles an hour, changing down a second to 40 miles an hour around this tight right-hander. Like Michael Andretti was trying to set up for a pass there, but uh, unable to do anything because... Uh, Cristiano didn't slow down anywhere near enough for Michael to get quite close enough. I think Michael was actually eyeing up to be so he's closer going up into turn one. I think everybody just jostling for position towards the next round of pit stops. That's what they're thinking about is to be in position when they have to make another pit stop. Cristiano De Mata leads. 65 laps have been completed. De Mata holding off all of these cars behind him driving at the race of his life so far i have to say never seen a performance like this he's never been in a position like this before and he's dry look at the look way at that. he had that sideways halfway down the length of that straightaway and, and he's, he's in. in he's into the pits kenny brex in as well but interestingly michael andretti adrian fernandez paul tracy are not in yet they reckon that they can still go a bit further and that could mean that they will need less fuel when they do come in and that could get them out ahead of this man Cristiano. Now, this needs a vitally quick uh, pit stop from the crew. They've never been in this position before, Guy. Uh, definitely some pressure on them right here. They're doing a very good job at this point. Tyres are all on. Just waiting to get all that fuel in because he's now got to go 39 laps till the end. And just beat Kenny Brack out. We saw Kenny in the back of the picture there. Uh, I think it's Max Pappas yes, at the back. That's too. right. So both Team Rahal cars in on the same lap there as they come out of pit lane. 
Now, how many more laps is Michael Andretti going to do? Now, he is our race leader. 74 laps completed. Michael Andretti race leader. Fernandez second, Tracy third, Tagliani now in fourth place. But they all have to make their pit stops. Now, here comes Michael about to complete another lap. Will he be heading into pit lane? Watch. Yes, I think he is. Michael's in, but Fernandez and Tracy stay out there. Lane, Fernandez. And hit your barks. Fernandez, a phenomenal fuel economy this year for him. Yes, that's right. Now then, let's see if we get a clean stop. It's sometimes been tricky for Andretti to get a clean stop. There's always some sort of problem that occurs. Remember, if you run over an airline, hit a wheel. Go, go. Ah, but this time it's a good stop. Good stop from Michael Andretti. Now, is he going to get out ahead of Cristiano? This is crucial. Let's try and see. Deferrin is in the pits. But he does seem to have been struggling a little bit in the recent laps. Where is Cristiano De Matta as he rejoins? And there is De Matta. So Michael has got out ahead of Cristiano. There is Cristiano, who has uh, his lapped teammate right behind him, Oriol Servia. But Cristiano's at full speed, and Michael's not. So he should be able to make up some ground down the straightaway here. And Michael's got cold tyres. Cristiano might be able to get him on braking going into three. Oh, he's getting it sideways under braking, but it's not close enough behind Michael to really challenge. And look at this now, we see Fernandez in, Tracy in to the pits, Jimmy Vassar into the pits. Right on these marks. See these three make some crucial pit stops to see if they can all beat each other out. Paul is in. This is a team that's made up some places in the past, isn't it? Long Beach, he managed to win, thanks really to the amount of work that his crew had done. Watch Tony, watch Tony. Pay limit, pay limit, pay limit. Think about the entry, Paul, the exit. Think about the exit. No mistakes on the exit. Barry Green talking his man through it. Now, where's he coming out? Michael's just come by. Michael's just come by. Michael's come by, we hear. Oh, Paul locks it up going into there. There is Michael. Michael. There is Michael. Battle for the lead here. Tracy back out in front of Tomata. Cuts across in front of Tomata. Michael is back in front and trying to get ahead of Michael Andretti. Tomata, look, he's at the marbles. On the marbles. And he's going to have no grip when he comes to break a turn three. Can he hold it together? Oh, yes. Nice driving from Tomata. That was brave oh, stuff. A nudge, a nudge from Paul Tracy. Now got more black marks on the front of his car. You saw the crew looking up at the big screen. They can see on the front straightaway there. Paul got second for a moment. Cristiano got back, but boy, did he push it to the limits up against the wall out on all those marbles. Amazing. He got some braking power going into turn three. But Fernandez has not been in yet. We thought he came in with that last group, and Fernandez has not been in, nor has Moreno, and nor has Carpentier. So we're still waiting for them to come into the pit, and they could still play a part here, particularly Fernandez, because uh, he was right up with this group. Now, there is Adrian. How quickly has he managed to go on these last couple of laps? Will it be enough? Will the little bit less fuel they have to put in the car be the crucial amount that allows him to get out ahead of Andretti. This is going to be great stuff. And then, of course, you've always got that danger that you don't put enough fuel in and you run out before the end. Uh, this is going to be absolutely frantic stuff because if they can just shorten up that pit stop by less fuel, then he's got to sit on the pit limiter and try and race down into turn one. It's going to be just... If they get it dead on right, it's going to be very, very close to Adrian taking the lead over here. So let's watch the crew now for the Patrick Racing Team. Moreno has stayed out, so Moreno's still going. He's getting, as, as ever, getting amazing fuel consumption. Now, let's watch this one. Car goes up on the jacks. The wheels come off. Here's Moreno's team right in front of Adrian getting up. set up. You'd think they would wait maybe just a second. This could cause a problem for Adrian to get a straight shot out. You're clear. Go, go, go. Clear, clear. Okay. He gets out safely. No problem for him. And that brings Adrian out. Wait. Here come the leaders. Where is Adrian going to rejoin? He's out. And is he in front? I think he might be there. That's Andretti. He's, he's in front, but he's on cold tyres. The same problem once again. And Fernandez now is going to try and hold the middle ground. Andretti's on hot tyres. Fernandez desperately trying to cover the inside. He's got to go to the inside. He's got to make Andretti go the long way around the outside. Into turn number three. Andretti cuts around in front of him. Great move from Michael, who takes the lead back from Fernandez. And Fernandez finds himself back in second. Well, Michael knew he had to get it done right okay, there and then okay. because he knew that Adrian was on cold tyres. And if he didn't get him, by the time he got around to complete a lap, Adrian would be perfectly up to speed and with the hot tyres. And he wouldn't be able to get around him. Here is Moreno, who's had a fuel economy. It's just been absolutely amazing. Has he been using top gear even all day? Now, this is the last chance, isn't it? Now, I don't think he will be able to get out ahead of Andretti. Andretti has really been...
putting the hammer down on the last couple of laps. He knows how crucial it is to go quickly at this point. Oh, no. oh, and slow getting that fuel out. And this is bad news for Moreno. And there's no way. Surely he's going to be able to get out. No, here come the leaders. And he's going to rejoin there in behind Paul Tracy. In and fourth. that will put him in, well, in fact, a little further down than that. Once it in fifth, I think. Andretti Fernandez, De Mata, Tracy, and then Roberto Moreno. Still, from Moreno's point of view, it's not been bad because he's made up quite a few places. He was running in 11th place. And he was very lucky. Oh, oh Cristiano! Cristiano! Oh, no, what have you done? <laughs> he's been doing it all day, but balancing it perfectly. But this time, he lets it get by, and poor Tracy gets by. So Tracy, that is, now up into third position as uh, Andretti leads. Oh, this is exciting stuff indeed. What an amazing run we've seen through this second round of pit stops. Now they have to try and make it last all the way to the chequered flag. I was just going back to Roberto Moreno. They're incredibly lucky that they, I thought they were waving him out and the fuel uh, pipe was still stuck in there. And then luckily, then luckily, Roberto didn't go ahead and they had pulled it out before he cleared. But And then he didn't get up to speed real quick and they just kind of lost out on that chance to get up with these lead guys here. Well, this is going to be an interesting one all the way to the checkered because I think they're all still going to have to be uh, running a little conservative on fuel, but running flat out in terms of driving the car to its limit, but just not allowing the engine to have quite as much fuel as it would like in some ways. And uh, Michael's really got to push. He's now at least dealt with all those people who had to come in and make pit stops. So now he can just control it from the front. And on a track like this, we're overtaking so hard. Roberto Moreno. ran out wide and came back in right across Tagliani. Yeah, I don't know quite what happened there, whether Moreno made a mistake. I think he must have done, because he was quite close behind those other two. And now, all of a sudden, he's in the clutches once again of Alex Tagliani. So I think he may have made a little mistake going into turn number three there. Tagliani, Breck and De Ferran running as a trio. Breck's the one who's lost out uh, considerably on both pit stops, it would appear, this afternoon. He's had to come in earlier than some of the others, and that's, I think, hurt him because he's now back down to seventh place when really Breck should have been, I think, uh, by this point, perhaps in the top three. So that's been a bit of a disappointment for the Swede. I think Roberto's got some kind of handling problem because he seems to have been very twitchy in the last two or three turns. Possibly got onto the dirt, got onto the marbles when he uh, had that moment down at turn three. That could explain why the car's now a little bit all over the place. Jimmy Vassa there, tucked in behind Pappis. But here is our race leader, and it is Michael Andretti who is pulling away up front. His advantage last time around, a full 2.6 seconds. And that's a bigger lead than we've seen anyone have this afternoon. Michael's really been cooking it after those second round pit stops. There's Adrian and Paul Tracy. Don't forget Oriol Servia there. We see he is, in fact, uh, three laps down on the leaders, but running in that traffic with... The uh, yellowy green car of Sevilla. He runs in 13th position, being three laps down, but uh, still running their sort of pace. No problem with that. 60.7 second lap, and that is uh, uh, fastest that Andretti has done in this race so far. Paul Tracy's being told he's got plenty of fuel in that car, so he can richen up the mixture and, in fact, use the overtake button, which richens the mixture even further for a little blast along the straight here if he wants to. And that perhaps could put him in uh, a chance of trying to find a way past Fernandez. He's got a little bit to catch up to him yet, but uh, once he gets to the situation, he can use that fuel button, the overtake button. He's got plenty of fuel, they're telling him. Here's Vassar and Pappas. Vassar's really lost out in that round of pit stops. He's down in 11th now, the last guy. He was sort of running up in about 7th before, so... That's right, yes. Must had, they must have had a problem. Definitely losing ground, sliding around quite a lot behind uh, his good mate, Max Pappas, but uh, won't be talking about uh, friendship out there at the moment. This is a race for position, race for points, which is so crucial. Lock up from De Ferran. Did he run wide or did he survive that? I think he survived, but... Uh, De Ferran there in the Team Penske entry, definitely getting a bit of smoke from the front tyres, uh, keeping it all together, and De Ferran running in, well, where is he, in eighth place now, so he has dropped down the order a little bit, it's definitely been a tough afternoon, but he needs to keep in there, he needs to stay in the top ten, because uh, Michael Andretti, who looks pretty well set to take maximum points here today, if the car holds together, will pull away from De Ferran in the championship. He won't move ahead of Moreno. Even if Moreno doesn't finish here today, Andretti cannot take the lead in the series. But if he does win, uh, he can pull away quite considerably from Gilles de Ferran. The two of them just separated by one point coming into this race. 
course, 20 points for the win, one bonus point for the pole, and one for leading the most laps. And the key thing that Roberto Marino did at Cleveland was he swept all those points. That's what gives him a 22-point lead over Michael Andretti, who is currently on 68 points. And then, as you mentioned, Gilles de Fran needs to score. He's third with 67. Kenny Brack on 63. And Paul Tracy on 59. Vassar on 59. And then it's uh, Montoya on 54. So... A good battle in the championship points at this point. Yeah, halfway stage in the season. Michael Andretti, who's already had one win in the series so far. That was at Motegi in Japan earlier on this year when he qualified in eighth. Has had a number of other races where he should have been up front. Had some uh, problems at Homestead when he was running in second position. So Andretti really has had some bad luck as ever. Now perhaps the chance to make up for it. Let's just ride on board with Max Pappis for a second. We've got this great nose-mounted camera giving us a tremendous view. We're up uh, through turns five here. And uh, turn six, the sweeping sort of carousel corner coming up and then uh, heading up towards that complex before the pits. Andretti pulling away up front, his advantage 3.4 seconds over Adrian Fernandez, so Michael continuing to pull away, and Tracy really not able to challenge Fernandez for second because he's dropped a, a further three seconds behind him, and meanwhile the sunshine is uh, showing well here. We thought we might get some rain this afternoon, there's a lot of storm activity, Oof, look at Moreno, a lot of storm activity around Toronto over the weekend, they even had some tornadoes on Friday uh, nearby, there was a lot of heavy overnight rain, coming into race day but today the weather conditions have actually kept very very good indeed we're looking at uh, Luis Garcia there who's just had a, a little bit of an off moment um, but the weather conditions have been fine and in fact we hear that uh, it's been a record attendance this year over the three days some 168,000 people have attended the race and I think that's always great about going to Canada guy you always get this tremendous support it's amazing actually we also get a lot of people who travel to Canada to watch the races a lot from Europe uh, and some of the North Americans come up to Canada to watch as well but they're certainly a very knowledgeable crowd too in Canada and they're very big race fans and we'll expect a big crowd in Vancouver too towards the end of the season that's right the second of the Canadian there's events. also uh, talk of, because they are so popular the races in um, Canada that maybe Montreal might be added to the schedule in a year or two. Well, that would be interesting to see indeed the Montreal Formula One circuit which uh, may also be opened up for champ cars in a few years time. That's one to watch for the moment as we await uh, the, the new calendar to come out. Uh, as we mentioned earlier on, should be coming out uh, this week or perhaps next week very soon now. Michael Andretti then, could he be heading for six wins in Toronto? 88 laps completed, he's up front, stay with us. Welcome back to Toronto. Michael Andretti loves this place. Uh, it's one of his favourite cities in the whole world, he says. And it could be uh, elevated even higher in his estimation if he carries on like this because he could be heading for win number six. He leads from Adrian Fernandez by 3.6 seconds after 91 of 112 laps have been completed. Tracy lies a slightly distant third to matter and even more distant fourth. And Moreno has just had problems. Now, we saw Moreno battling with Demata a few moments ago. And then the next thing we saw, suddenly he dropped way back from Demata, was battling with Tagliani. All of a sudden, Tagliani, De Ferran, Carpentier, Papis and Vassa all got past Roberto. And it would seem that he maybe has a puncture or something similar to that. And he has just made it round to the, the uh, pit area, uh, pulled off. But the other thing too is, as all those guys went by, Tagliani, Dufran, Carpentier, Pappas, we noticed that Kenny Brack didn't go by. And we're not quite sure what's happened to Kenny. I think Kenny overran one of the corners, went down the escape road and has lost a lot of time. He's now 43 seconds behind the leader. And it, He's going to be fighting, obviously, to get and stay on that uh, lead lap with everybody else. And hopefully he'll get by Moreno. But we're not sure what happened to Moreno. We're guessing that the uh, tyre going down, the tyres going down. Yeah, we uh, assume so. Moreno now down in 10th place. And this is obviously a real blow to Moreno's championship hopes because uh, his main rival in the series looks as though he's heading to win the 20 points here today, Michael Andretti. The gap between them was just 22 points coming into this race. Moreno down to 10th. And he only, you'd only score three points for 10th place, so he would still have the lead. But boy, it's going to be close as they move on to round 11 at Michigan on the Super Speedway. So this championship so alive, we expect it really to go all the way to the wire. And the final event in Fontana in California at the end of the season 
but it's fun to just see the changes in the championship, the moves up and down in the points, and the fact that uh, Montoya, for example, again, not scoring here today, the reigning champion, seventh in the championship coming into this race, but uh, he'll be even further down than that. Uh, by the way, things are going here at the moment. He was only five points ahead of De Mata, and De Mata is in fourth place here. So Juan is definitely going to drop further down the order here today. And Dario, of course, all the way mired down in 14th position, a uh, 13th position, just ahead of Christian Filippoldi, uh, trailing by about 50 points right now. Moreno and add a few more on after this. So a tough break for him, but his teammate Paul Tracy, who seems to have been outperforming him so far this year uh, he is running in third and looking for a hometown victory here he loves racing here lots of friends and family come out to watch him you saw that great view from the hundred dollar seats a few moments ago from behind pit lane that was a great shot and a lot of his family and friends will be up there rooting for him and he would be the top finishing canadian at this point unless alex tagliani can do anything about it running in fifth right behind the matter yeah good race this from tagliani so far been impressed with him and uh, with his aggressive nature and ability to get past people it's been good stuff from uh, the rookie canadian there we're looking at adrian fernandez in the takati car and uh, these familiar colors that adrian's been driving with uh, for a number of seasons now adrian himself has had a bit of an up and down championship once again uh, he lies in 11th place in the series on 45 points at the moment had a win at rio had a few Good finishes in that early third of the season, was fifth in Nazareth as well. Last couple of races, not quite so promising, 12th in Portland, a seventh place finish last time out in Cleveland. But of course, watching his teammate, Roberto Moreno, really sort of capturing the imagination, perhaps finding that a little frustrating. But they do work well together, there's no doubt about it. Moreno and Fernandez like very similar setups on their cars, and that has helped both of them be competitive in a number of races this year. 18 laps remaining, Andretti, our leader, leads by just over three seconds over Adrian, who we were talking about, Paul Tracy in third, the matter fourth, Tagliani fifth, and Dufran in sixth, Carpentier in seventh, Max Pappas is eighth, Jimmy Vassar down in ninth, Roberto Moreno in tenth, still scoring a couple of points, Kenny Brack in eleventh, eleventh after running off the track, and then Garcia, who is a lap down, still running, and Oreo Servia, who had contact earlier with the wall, is still running in thirteenth, but three laps down and that's the entire field that is running right now so that's why these cars are kind of split out all over the track there's third place man paul tracy just going through the shot and there is de Mata. so you can see that they're all pretty well spaced out now de Mata nearly 13 seconds behind the race leader so a very different situation to earlier in the race when we saw that train of 11 cars separated by uh, really just a second each they were within about 10 seconds of each other so that was highly impressive now of course in this final stint things have really spread out much more and Andretti taking advantage of that to establish this nearly four second lead over Adrian Fernandez. And I think being his 260th career start really the experience of Michael really paid off on his outlap from the pit stops and then defending his outlap or fending off the outlaps of all the other guys as they came out on cold tyres and then after three, I mean he just immediately put stretched out quite a lead and a pretty impressive driving performance from Michael Andretti during that second round of pit stops. Yeah, this is really a vintage Andretti performance that we've seen here today. Michael, who has, has certainly had some bad luck this year and blown a little bit hot and cold, but this is the sort of Michael Andretti who took the five wins in the past here. Last time was uh, 1995 that he took the victory here in Toronto. So it's been a, a bit of a five-year drought uh, back here in Canada, but he has driven, as you say, really, really well, really thinking about it, putting the pressure on Demata earlier in the race and just looking for a mistake, although not making any risky moves. And that's been a feature sometimes of Michael's driving, that he does take uh, risk, takes risks in getting past people. But we haven't seen that today. He waited for his opportunity. When he got the opportunity, got in front, as you say, drove really hard to stay in front and to get past those people coming out of the pits. And now he's just sort of stroking it, looking after the machinery and staying in front. Well, we were discussing it too, Ben, at lunch. I mean, for a guy to have won 38 races and to have not uh, to have only won one championship uh, is very unusual. So maybe Michael's being a little less aggressive, th thinking more along the, chi the, the theme of a championship as opposed to getting those race victories. And now he's really working on that. And you have to say, Guy, that uh, in terms of the championship, 
he really could be a major player. I mean, here he is, second in the series. He's going to be close to the lead in the championship after this race, if the car holds together here, if he holds on to this position. And I think uh, that'll make everybody worry, because Michael is always such a threat. He's always such a racer. Yes, he's had a lot of bad luck, but if that luck just comes his way a little bit, well, I tell you what, he could really uh, start to dominate in the second part of the season. Having said that, I think we're, we're going to watch the likes of Team Penske, Montoya, Franchitti make a resurgence as well. And uh, it could be very tight all the way. Garcia into the pits, back out again. I think this is just a, a scheduled stop for him. He was out of sequence with the others, having made an earlier stop. Uh, but he's heading for a point here today to add to the two that he scored so far this year. But he's... That's all right. He's done a good job here and uh, has kept out of trouble, which is more than a lot of people. Well, have done. we saw him early on in the race doing those quick laps as he was uh, just ahead of the matter, and uh, he did a nice job of uh, staying up there and repeatedly putting in quick laps until they eventually t told him to move over. It looked to me like Adrian has lost a little bit of time to Michael, and Michael has got clear sailing, no traffic really to deal with. He will eventually, of course, catch up with Garcia here fairly shortly. That's right, yes, that'll be a car to lap, but I don't think he's going to be too worried about that. So oh, Moreno has really had his problems. He's not got back up to real speed. Now Michael's going to cap, come up and start lapping him. That's right, and uh, Roberto down in 11th position. Breck has got past Moreno now, so that uh, does mean that Moreno's only going to get about one point, or maybe two points here today. Just looking at our race summary, as you can see, we had four different leaders here today. The average speed has been pretty good. We've only had the two cautions and only for six laps. And that's, uh, I know that's not the least we've had here in Toronto, but it's certainly approaching the least. Uh, just six laps under yellow on a street course. That's uh, a pretty good performance from these guys. 13 laps to go. We could still see another yellow. Michael finds Roberto at a fairly good place to overtake. Roberto gets out of it. And now he's really slowed down. He was up to speed before, but now Roberto's really slowed down. So I think maybe the problem he has got could be ruled terminal. Oh, look at this. Max Pap is going down the inside of Luis Garcia, trying to stay in contact with Patrick Carpentier just ahead of him. Yeah, and Jimmy Vassa still in that battle. There he is now trying to get past Garcia himself. Slides up the inside into turn five. Makes the move no problem at all. And Jimmy continues. So uh, up front, we've got a Lola Ford package leading this race. Ford, uh, certainly we're expecting great things this season, and it does seem to be coming together for them a bit now. 20 points their advantage over Honda in the Manufacturers Championship coming into this race, and it looks as though we've got Fords running first and second in this race, Honda in third, Toyota in fourth. It does seem as though that Cosworth engine new this year, the XF engine really does seem to be providing the goods. And we've got a Lola chassis up front, of course. We've seen a win for Lola earlier this year for Michael, that first win for such a long time when he won in uh, Motegi. Another win for Lola for Juan Montoya in Milwaukee. So this could be their third victory of the season. It's actually kind of interesting. The Ford Reynard combination has three wins. The Honda oh, Reynard. Oh, 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 Moreno pulling off, as you said, Guy. It looks as though it was terminal, and it really is now. Uh, I think it's all over, and it is. Uh, so back to the Honda Reynard. They've had four wins. The Ford Lola, just the one win with Michael, and the Toyota Lola, of course, with one win. So now the thing is, Moreno in 11th, and he's going to lose the position to Garcia, 12th, and possibly lose a, possibly lose a position to Serbia. Yeah. Yeah, so he won't score points. That's basically, so basically he, he won't score points. Sometimes it can be that even if you don't finish in champ cars, if uh, if you were up there before the end of the race and drop back, then and if you're in the top 12, then you still get points even if you don't finish the race. But that's not going to happen on this occasion. Well, I'm not sure that Servio is going to get three laps back in 11 laps. So um, he may finish 12th and get one point. Yeah, I don't think so. I think uh, I think that Moreno won't score anything today. But of course. Andretti still won't quite take the lead in the championship because Moreno had that 22-point lead coming in. And the one point for pole went to Elio Castroneves. The other point for leading most laps will have gone to Cristiano. So it'll be 20 points to Michael Andretti. But boy, that'll make the championship close. It'll then just be two points between Moreno and Andretti as we head off towards Michigan. That'll be interesting. It's quite a... Uh contrast going from the street road course of Toronto to the super speedway of Michigan just one week later that of course is what makes this kart series so exciting the way they change from track to track cars will be completely different configuration of course in Michigan running on the super speedway speeds of uh, up to 220 to 30 miles an hour remember on those super speedways and using the Hanford wing which has certainly allowed for plenty of overtaking in the last couple of years on those super speedways 
little bit less now perhaps than when they first started using them and they've got a bit more used to them now and uh, perhaps set the cars up a little better but nonetheless it has been a, a very worthy addition interestingly this enough i didn't like it max pappis of course, oh, that's right last year should have won of fuel yeah and tony canaan went on to score his first kart series victory just over Montoya as Max ran out of fuel on that last lap and he was such an emotional Max Pappas and then when he finally did get that first win at Homestead this year we saw those same emotions again from Max and just uh, great for him great for all these guys getting their first wins and of course once you get one they always say it supposedly gets easier and so many of these drivers in the field have won races that's the great thing about this series is so many potential winners every weekend and you might have a bad weekend where everything goes wrong and you end up nowhere the next weekend you can come back and win everything for moreno it's been the other way around this time cleveland two weeks ago he dominated took pole won the race this weekend been struggling a little bit made up ground in the end he's gone out with mechanical failure and uh, failed to finish the event but that's the way it goes but it is so competitive you can always come back and fight another day fernandez just uh, holding on to that second place at the moment good news in terms of picking up some points here today paul tracy who was for much of the early part of the season the championship leader of course tracy has had three non-finishes in a row in the last few races uh, gearbox problem in cleveland um, his suspension collapsed in portland a few weeks ago and he was disqualified in detroit after running over one of his crew members he was only 15th in milwaukee before that so paul's had a really really tough time in uh, this last third of the season up to now and this really will perhaps get his campaign back on track he still lies in fifth place in the championship on 59 points and some healthy points to be added to his tally here today should move him up perhaps back into the top three i would think as you mentioned he hasn't scored points since nazareth that's kind of tough to live with so he'll be happy with this one and of course the fact they're in canada so Michael Andretti, our race leader, out of 104 laps completed, out of 112, we're in the countdown now. Andretti looking for that sixth win in Toronto. Michael Andretti coming through the series of corners that lead to start finish line and as he crosses this time there will be just five laps to go five laps of this uh, exhibition place street circuit a place that has given him so much joy in the past and it looks as though it's going to do much the same here today his advantage over Adrian Fernandez some 4.2 seconds Paul Tracy is another five seconds back in third place and then it's a quite a long way back until we see the early race leader Cristiano De Mata struggled after the second pit stop the car really not working as well as it had early on so he runs fourth Tagliani in a good fifth place Gilles de Ferran hanging on gamely in sixth Patrick Carpentier is in seventh Max Papp is eighth Jimmy Vassa ninth Kenny Breck running in tenth and Luis Garcia is in eleventh although we just saw him getting a bit of help from the marshals a second ago so uh, we'll have to wait and see whether he's actually still running okay um, Kenny Breck long way down in tenth position behind Vassa Michael uh really doesn't have his work cut out at all he's got that nice big gap no one in front of him again and here he comes round, and this time by there should be four to go as you said uh, earlier on guy it's astonishing in a way that he hasn't won more championships with the number of races he's won over the years this is his 260th start this will be his 40th victory in champ car racing in his 17 seasons of competition it's been a long time he's been racing a long time but he's had a lot of success he might have only won the championship once that was back in 1991 but five times he has been the championship runner-up and often it's been bad luck that's kept him out of the top spot they have had some bad luck um, and of course they've made some changes and he went away for a year to, to formula one well, that certainly wasn't much luck for him and came back and switched teams again it actually has even as strong as the relationship is between the Newman Haas and the Andretti's Mario and Michael is it's actually even some talk that Michael may be leaving Newman Haas which I find extraordinary I mean always been there basically right yes and he has and he's performed well but uh, this season I think there's been a few question marks over some of his performances but I think there's no question marks over this performance it's been uh, real vintage Andretti stuff keeping the pressure on in the early laps uh, as we said not taking too many gambles but just pushing the car all the time and in this last stint he's looked absolutely superb have to say bad luck for Christian Filippaldi because Christian really could have been up there in the battle for the lead here if he hadn't hit the back of Deferrin in the pit stops and lost the nose cone uh, which ended his race then Christian Filippaldi could definitely have been a very strong factor up here in this race and Adrian of course 
really wasn't much of a factor in this race, but the superb fuel economy and a good pit stop got him up into this second position here. See that green flag being waved in the background? Could be the Garcia's car has gone, is uh, actually down the escape road at turn three with a stationary yellow perhaps, and uh, the green flag just showing that the drivers are all clear there. Garcia, as I said, uh, was pushed off and he's definitely not running now. He's gone four laps down, and uh, so that's bad news indeed for him after running really quite strongly here today. Just three laps to go, uh, as in fact, just two laps to go now as Michael crosses the line, and uh, it really does look as though win number six in Toronto here is on the cards. Newman Haas, the most successful team entrant here at Toronto as well. And Team Green are just hoping that Paul Tracy's car holds together and that the bad luck that he's suffered in recent races doesn't suddenly crop up again. Well, it also looked like they were hunched over doing a lot of calculations there. So when they made that round of pit stops, Domato was one of the first ones in, along with Kenny Brack. And then when they went out, they had 39 laps to go, which is why they've all backed off and why they haven't been racing towards the end here, because uh, they're trying to make the fuel last for them. And I don't think Paul should have a problem with last with the fuel. That's right, uh, I think it's definitely, it should be okay on fuel. And uh, Michael Andretti coming through. This will be to take the white flag this time around. Just one more lap for Michael Andretti to take his second win of the 2000 white season. White flag, Mike. White flag. And the team giving him the story. He knows it. Surely he's been counting it down lap by lap. And what a brilliantly driven race this has been from Michael Andretti, the 37-year-old. He's the veteran, in a way, now of the championship after being uh, the new boy for so many years. But this performance really has been true Andretti racing, and he has dominated the last third of the race. From that second pit stop onwards, really nobody's been able to hold a candle to Michael Andretti. And it looks as though Lola and Ford are going to take another win. It'll be uh, the third win for Lola Chassis this year. And uh, for Ford, they've had uh, the most wins of all so far this season. They really are in great shape. And it looks to another one to add to their tally. Fernandez will back him up in second place. But this will be a very popular victory, I'm sure, for Michael Andretti. He's had his problems. He's had his ups and downs this season. A lot of mechanical problems, some problems and mistakes that he's made as well. But no mistakes today. Michael Andretti takes win number six in Toronto, gets himself right back in the championship race. And Michael Andretti is the winner of the Molson Indy here at Exhibition Place. I hear him on the radio, we'll listen in. Adrian Fernandez crosses the line, takes second place. Tracy delighted with third. At last, they've managed to get some points after failing to finish the last three. There is Mario, delighted with that victory. It was uh, nail biting stuff towards the end, seeing so many cars being forced into retirement through unreliability or whatever. Mechanical problems. Fernandez coming up to congratulate Michael. <laughs> and the radio celebrations beginning. Paul's going to try and come up and give his recognition to these guys, of course, were teammates at Newman Haas. And they still have them. They didn't really seem to get on that well. And then uh, they still have their moments now. And of course, the incident with uh, Michael and Paul Tracy at Chicago uh, still comes up every now and again. But I think really they're good friends, really. <laughs> it's just about. They are certainly the old guard, aren't they, of Champ Car Racing. So many youngsters in this uh, series now who have performed so well, but I think that's what makes this championship so great, is that you've got guys out there like Andretti, capable of winning races, and when it all goes according to plan, there he is, once again, winning races, and it's great for the series. His name has such great recognition in the United States, and in fact, all over the world, of course, uh, through his father's exploits, through Michael's own exploits in Formula One as well, so great to see him take the victory. Let's take a look at those results then. Fernandez second, Tracy third. Damada getting the extra point for leading most laps, but in the end had to settle for fourth. Tagliani, impressed with him today, finished in fifth. Deferrin sixth. Carpentier, Papis, and on down through Vassa, Breck, Servia, Garcia. Moreno in 13th today, so no points for the championship leader. He still maintains that series lead, but by just two points from this man, Michael Andretti. Michael Andretti getting his second win of the year. So we have two repeat winners for the year 2000. That's the fifth win for Ford. And of course, the sixth win for Michael here in Toronto. And it's been five years since he won here. And he hasn't, this is the first time for him to win on the new configuration of the, of the course. So I think Michael's gonna be pretty happy. And of course, also 
what makes it so happy for him is the fact that he's beaten the kids, the up-and-coming fast Brazilians, Demata, Servia, and all those guys, and he's proving to himself that he can still do it despite being one of the elder statesmen in the sport.